You've invested several hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars. Your time, your dreams, your future all resting on this process. And even after all that investment, there's no guarantee of success. Many will face a wall, reaching an unsuccessful ending, but perhaps after months and months of waiting. The question is, why? Well, it's most likely because of a mistake you made or a mistake they made. But don't worry, that's why I'm here. In this video, we'll uncover three common mistakes that petitioners make. And no, I'm not just here to scare you. Oh yeah, I'll also tell you how to get my free new ebook. My name is Stefan Akoli and I'm here to do for you what so many people have done for me over the years and that is to provide you with information, important information that could maybe change a life or two. Okay, three common mistakes made by petitioners. Number one, submitting weak reference letters. Sometimes I call them recommendation letters, sometimes I call them reference letters, same thing but submitting weak ones. That's a mistake, a common mistake. Now reference letters, they're not technically required, but they can be tremendously useful in an NIW case. And many adjudicators expect to see them. Now, if you were gonna make a checklist to make sure that your reference letters are good, let me give you a few things that I would suggest you put on that checklist. The reference letter should include the letter writer's qualifications and their position in their field or industry. The letters should contain how the writer knows of you and your work and your accomplishments. The letters should include specific information about your work. The reference letter should include which work you're responsible for. The reference letter should point out the expertise that you possess. And the reference letter should strengthen the argument that you meet the standard set out by the three-part test that USCIS uses when judging whether an individual deserves the NIW. So in light of the first part of that three-part test, the letter should focus on your influence on and your contribution to your field or industry. If your reference letters adhere to those guidelines, then your reference letters will to a large extent be inoculated against a lot of the common mistakes that I see with reference letters. For example, it would be hard for you to choose really bad people to write your reference letters when each reference letter writer is listing their qualifications, their positions, and how they know you and your work. Look, reference letters may play a hugely important role in your case, so avoid some of the common reference letter mistakes. Mistake number two, too much supporting documentation can harm your case. Many people will confuse quantity with quality. Don't be one of them. As a result, those people who confuse quantity with quality submit hundreds and hundreds of pages of documents instead of less really strong documentation. Look, USCIS examiners, they only have a limited amount of time to review your petition. If you submit, say, a thousand pages of supporting evidence, do you really think a USCIS adjudicator is going to read through all of it? They're not. Rather than finishing a thousand pages, some of which may be too technical, some of which may be redundant, some of which may just be flat out boring, they will just stop at a certain point and make a decision based on what they have read up to that point. If you have too many pages and some of your best, most convincing evidence is toward the end, they may never get to it or they may be too tired or annoyed at that point to understand the significance of the great documents that you have at the bottom of the pile of documents that you've submitted to them. Also, if you think that your most important, salient, and convincing documents will stick in the examiner's brain when the examiner is drowning in documentation, well, I have a lot of books on persuasion that you might want to read. Of course, minimal evidence is also problematic. Submitting little documentation will make your case stand out in a bad way. But the common tendency is to submit too much documentation, not too little documentation. Strike the proper balance when it comes to the amount of documentation you present. 
By the way, I made a couple of other videos talking about mistakes that folks make when they are in the EB2 and IW petition process. I will post links to those videos in the description to this video below. Check them out. And while I'm talking about links in the description, make sure you check out my new ebook to get 25 major EB2 NIW tips to have a successful petition. Mistake number three, too many people waste what might be the most important document in the EB2 NIW petition package, the cover letter. Simply listing the documents that are included in the package on the cover letter is not a good strategy. It's a fine strategy in some simpler types of immigration cases, but the EB2 and IW is different because with the EB2 and IW, a lot more persuasion is needed. You need to persuade the adjudicator, the examiner. Let me give you some goals you should have with the cover letter. You should explain in plain English how your submission satisfies each part of the three-part test. You should try to compare successful EB2 and IW cases to your case and try to show that your case is stronger than those cases that have been successful in the past. You should describe your work and its effect on your field or your industry. You should detail the actual benefits of your work. A cover letter, when done right, can make all the difference between success and failure. And too many people do not take the opportunity to use the cover letter to its full potential. That's it, my dear viewer. That's all of this video. You've made it to the end. And I hope you learned something here. If you did, make sure to subscribe and like this video because there are more videos like this on the way.